Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Vulcan Report. This end of day precious metals report is for trading on Thursday, August the 18th, 2016. Starting off with gold futures, you can see here that gold powered up a little bit today. Markets well supported at 1342 and it is locking in this bull trend cycle. So I expect that the 1380 to 1400 area <clears throat> excuse me, should be challenged uh, by next week, and we're setting pretty for that to happen. <clears throat> excuse me, should the 1400 uh, area be taken out, and and the market actually close above 1400, that could signal a parabolic upthrust in the gold market. So this market is starting to show signs of major powering up. In a following video I will uh, show you um, some more information from the system chart. As a matter of fact if you haven't already done so you're gonna want to uh, head on over to the blog and I did post uh, this week's uh, system technicals for you for the gold market. Alright and I think that uh, you would benefit greatly from that so you can see exactly what the uh, the market forces are up to. All right, looking, uh, switching our focus now to the equity side of the gold, looking at Nugget, ticker symbol NUGT. Uh, now, these leveraged ETFs, you know, you got to you gotta trade cautiously because, you know, they're prone to these gaps, all right, these kind of gapping moves. All right, they're sensitive to movements of the uh, in the overnight markets from the futures, so just keep that in mind. You may not be able to hold them uh, beyond three to five days. You may have to cycle yourself in and out of them. All right, sometimes you can catch like a, a trend like this, but like I said, three to five days m max. And this one, if you were short, it gave you that five days right here, right in here. And then look, it's turning up. So this uh, this market is catching a bid based off of what gold did today. All right. So you can see the momentum's pointing up in this, and it's even though it's still in a negative pulse wave position, this momentum is trying to change that, and it's trying to it's getting back above this trend line here. All right. That's strong. That's powerful. That's what you want to see. All right. So this is this is setting up to be something pretty dynamic. So we'll have to wait and see how it develops. Tomorrow is Take Back Friday, by the way. And what can you say about dust? <laughs> Just dust is dust. Even though uh, gold had a little bit of pullback in it, dust has not really been able to take off. And it's just right here. So it's doing nothing. It's coming off of a new low of $4.56. And momentum is pointing down even lower. And this one on the daily chart is only supported at four dollars and fifty-eight cents. So, and with, with, with closing at five dollars and seven cents, it's not looking good. Looks like that four fifty-six is gonna is gonna be taken out. I suspect what's gonna happen is they're gonna let dust get further into the dust and go the way of TVIX and UVXY. They'll probably get and drop below a buck, and then they'll reprice it up to like twenty bucks, giving you another chance. Uh, you know, and that way you can short it from 20. Shorting it from shorting any stock that's under five dollars is a dangerous thing, and I'll tell you why. Because your downside is limited. If you short something at five dollars and it goes to zero, you've only made five bucks. That's the max you can make. But your upside is unlimited. So in a situation, if it were to to go parabolic on you and you're short here. And this thing were to gap up at 30. I don't mean a reprice. I don't mean, you know, re reverse splits and all that. I'm talking about just for whatever reason, if this thing tomorrow opened up at 40, what would you do? If you were short down here at $4, what are you going to do when it opens the next day at 40? You're destroyed. You see what I'm saying? So get into the habit of not shorting a stock, you know, below 5 bucks. Five bucks and below is ridiculous. Why are you shorting? You should have shorted when it was at 30 and 40 and 50, not when it's at five bucks. The only thing you're doing when you see a stock 
cheap like this any stock that's five dollars and below that's when you're you're backing up the truck and getting ready to go hard when it does turn around that's when you go hard or you buy a bunch of shares and just sit on it like you do your gold and silver uh, physicals that's what these kind of stocks are for if that makes any sense to you okay all right moving on all right looking now at GLD GLD see how that that's a that's a nice pop up there taking out the prior day's highs well supported at 127.40 so definitely uh, if you're not in the GLD then you probably need to be you gotta watch the sheet let the sheet uh, trigger you into the trade do not try to chase the market we do not do that we don't chase the market we let the markets come to us the market will take you and put you in the trade and it will take you out of the trade you do not need to run and try to chase the trade all right um, those of you who have the um, the post wave sheet for this week then you'll note where your post wave trigger is to get you in the trade uh, for this week you're not there yet all right so don't get too happy and just jump in there um, sometimes you can do that and it'll work out for you but that's not how we do uh, we use discipline in our trading and we let the market come to us when we go long we let the market come to us and trigger us into trade when we want to go short we let the market come to us and trigger us into the trade we stop ourselves long we stop ourselves short that's how we get in and out of these markets all right, looking at your DDX now, looking at your gold miners, same thing. Starting to get a little pop here. Momentum's pointing up. Still has overhead resistance, though, at 31.75. So we'll see what happens. Um, you know, all things being equal, if it doesn't happen on Take Back Friday tomorrow, it could, it could happen next week. Just keep in mind we are in a negative pulse wave right here, even though the market's still bullish. So more downside could still come until you... Uh, put it into the downtrend itself or pull back however you want to discuss it until you get out of the negative pulse wave situation scenario you got to be cautious all right so just keep that in mind you got to trade lightly until you are out of the woods on this one all right uh, the the junior miners again are showing more strength than the big boys you see how this one totally took out last uh, yesterday's high and we closed at 5170 and good momentum as well and it's well supported forty nine dollars and forty six cents GDXJ is looking rather strong here so you're gonna want to you know refer to the weekly pulse waves to see where those are and then you want to trade accordingly don't just rush yourself into the market let the market come to you all right as you can see silver is the weaker of the two all right it's uh, it's red today all right technically closing down lower than yesterday's close yesterday we closed in 1968 and today we literally close at 1973 and so technically it would supposed to be really green there but it's red I mean the momentum is is kinda pointing up a little bit but just remember though we did have the crash warning for silver this week and it, and it kinda did it you know yesterday it got down to uh, nineteen dollars and thirty two cents so we can't ignore that okay coming into it we did hit a new low for this week alright this is a new low so it did do it all right, the system is playing out the the alert playing out like it should, and you're still in a negative pulse wave. Okay, you need to break 2066 as of today's close. If it can do it tomorrow, then it can put an end to uh, the corrective phase of this and get back bullish again and head up to 22. All right, looking at SLV, pretty much the same scenario. Um, again, you don't want to see a break below the orange long-term trend line of 1821 because then that puts you into the Kumo cloud of death where it'll just move sideways like this and it can ebb and flow at the bottom and the top of the Kumo cloud all right which is a, a dollar range now you're looking at approximately 17 to 18 bucks you know that's a dollar of consolidation up and down for any length of time perhaps one and a half to two weeks 
you could see that theoretically happen in the SLV if it breaks below support and gets into the cloud. All right, looking at your silver miner, you can see the silver miner fared better than the actual physical. Well supported now at 51.42. Momentum's pointing up. Uh, looking good right now in this one. All right, looking at the uh, the the junior silver miner, same same scenario almost as the gold one, but not quite. It just couldn't quite best yesterday's high of 1928. We're going out at, at 1923. We did hit a high of 1929, so we bested it by a penny, but didn't couldn't close above it. Just couldn't get enough momentum under it. Uh, but even still, it's well supported at eighteen dollars and forty-four cents. Well, well, well. What can we say about this? Here, you're looking at the situation of the U.S. dollar, and it's just not looking good. You're continuing to hit new lows. You just drop below the Kumo cloud. And you're in danger of dropping below 494 and hitting into that 93 handle that I was telling you about. Remember what I said? If this Kumo cloud, if it breaks that support, it doesn't have support until it gets down to 93. And that's where it's heading now. 93 is in play now. All right. It's in play now. It's, it's, it's coming down and it's doing it on good momentum. And this downtrend part of this cycle is locking in. You're in a negative pulse wave. There it is for you right there, folks. Uh, those of you who trade futures, uh, you would have been able to benefit this week from the shorting the U.S. dollar because the U.S. dollar is on the sheet and the system triggered uh, that short. And you can see that price for this week at 94.94. You've been hearing me mention that 94.94 for a minute now for at least a week about and that's what happened it got triggered we got down to 9405 and here you are all right this is how the pulse waves work okay so uh what else can you say and last but not least a quick look at that uh bitcoin so you can see what it's doing real quick and as you can see here <clears throat> excuse me um, 571.10 is where you're at and um, you know it's not hitting new lows uh, off of the dollar it actually came back a little bit but you can see um, at the beginning of the week we did alright here we go on the 13th hitting 556.67 and then the next day it hit 558.11 alright so here you are, 556. Is what, here, here we are on Thursday. This is Wednesday. This is Tuesday. This is Monday. This is Sunday night. This is Sunday and Monday. See what I'm saying? So you started your week off already in the continuation pattern from Friday. Look how it precipitously dropped from Friday. Okay? Then it came up. So it's almost like it's leading the dollar in a sense. Is this an indication that the dollar could get some kind of retracement back up like this? I don't know. Um, the only thing I can tell you is that this overhead resistance right now is is continuing to come down. We were up here at the 600 level. Now here we are approaching the 580 level. So we got these these over overhead wind trade winds pressing down on this market now. I did also post for you the technicals for the bitcoins on uh, on the website so you want to go check out that blog so you can see what those technicals are for this week for the bitcoin for those of you that have exposure in this market. All right, well with that said, that's all we got time for today. So remember bulls make money, bears make money and pigs get slaughtered. So remember to take what you can and give nothing back.